This episode of the Rogue Deck Builder is brought to you by InkPlaymats.com, the official playmat vendor of RogueDeckBuilder.com. Visit InkPlaymats.com for custom playmats, dice bags, and even card sleeves. You can even pick up your own Rogue Deck Builder playmat. InkPlaymats.com. Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with match number three with our uh, white heroic deck. Playing its Polite Aggression, that's a pretty sweet name. Snappy little name. All right, yes, we'll play first. This is uh, risky. A first turn thought seize takes the Johnny's presence. And we have no early aggro. We're on the play, which means this is a little weaker of a hand. Fable Hero, a lot of times, are just like on the draw. You, you drop it out and then can go from there. I will just be dropping the first Fable Hero. For sure, are on turn three, and then if it dies, we have a second. We have a we have a fourth turn fable hero to protect. So actually, we don't because we we have double radiant fountain. So temple of silence. Um, most likely be Abzan mid range. This could be a Mardu deck as well. Mardu is starting to get more popular as the days go by. So we'll see what he plays here. Hopefully, I can protect my fable hero. Uh, looks like it is going to be a thought sees, So. That is a little bit harsh. It can take the Johnny's presence. It can take the Fable Hero. It can take the Defiant Strike. But it doesn't mean he, he's progressing his board whatsoever. He takes a Fable Hero. So this match might just be blue black control and they're using the temples. And he's got another Thought Seize. Alright, well, he's out of cards. And I'm just a top deck away of finding another creature to really put in this, this game away. This is going to be nice. We do find a creature. It's albeit it is a weak creature, but it is something I end up finding strike. And he's down to a 15 already between the polluted delta and the thought seizes. I'm still thinking this might just be blue and black control. They're starting to splash for white for Elspeth. They're thinking Elspeth's a better win con than the the prognostic sphinx. I tend to agree with them on that. There's a fabled hero. This is risky. I think I'm going to give me myself one more turn to protect the fabled hero. And I shouldn't have done that, actually. I should have defiant striked on the Laguna. Um, yeah, I think that's actually fine to cast a sky guard. Or, you know, I think you wait it out. And not give him any targets. And we can keep up the Johnny's presence. Because he's on a 13 turn clock. And that's actually very realistic with these control decks. That gains him a life. That's obnoxious. But if we draw into a land here, we'll be pretty good. Favorite hoplite, I do believe we'll start playing those. Or actually, I can, I can play the, the Sky Guard. And if he wants to kill, he want, he can kill it. I don't think I'll be protecting the Sky Guard. I'm just going to be making him use a a card to handle the Sky Guard. A Johnny's Presence can t put it up to a 3-3-4 a turn. So if he drowns in Sorrows here, I probably will. I do have to worry about end hostilities, but we have a Johnny's Presence, so not that much. And I think I make him react. So Johnny's presence, if I, nope, nope, yep, I just make him react. So if he, in hostilities here, I make them both indestructible. He knows I have it, though. Quick gain in life. Jeez. Three cards still left in his hand. Can't quite Elspeth here. Please end hostilities. Prognostic Sphinx, okay. That is a very decent card. So now I can, I can really go crazy here and cast what I need to cast. So I, I think I just, uh, He's double white, so Radiant Fountain is is really messing me up in this in this matchup. I think what I do is I do put out Ramaz. Ramaz is a, a stronger card, but I, if he does decides to end hostilities this turn, I'm pretty far behind. And man, he has gained four or three life from his, his lands. 
And he does not decide to attack, so I'm in pretty decent shape here. Feet of resistance is going to be nice. So do I just swing in with everything? He blocks the sky guard. I can... Ugh. I don't know exactly what I want to do here. I think I just leave back the sky guard. And this way he'll block the little cat soldier. I could actually see him uh, blocking Brimaz here. That's, that's definitely fine. And we could kill this Prognostic Sphinx if we wanted to. But I, I don't see any point to going all out here. Again, I'm just going to keep my hand full of stuff so I don't get, just get blown out of the water by a board wipe. See if he can dig it in a turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, he could dig here. So he's going to dig. Which is annoying. Wish they would say exile this card. That's the one thing that I kind of think about dig. That it adds to the delve. It's a delve card that adds to more delves. And it's just late game. It just becomes too efficient through the delve i'm hoping they give back white a nice little answer to delve like torment's crypt is not what you want i just want in the form of a creature that again the dryads militant would be great uh, i would love if i if dryads militant was legal in the format again i might consider using it over lagona because then it just it just really hoses down these delve type strategies and it doesn't affect creatures or lands so but at least it does get rid of like thought seasons and and all these decks that want to like chain delve spells. So Ashiok. Ashiok at this point isn't the most powerful of cards. We're just going to take him out next turn. Means he can't attack in with his guys. He gets a fabled hoplite. You know what? I don't even really care. Uh, what did it exile here? Well, he actually got a very powerful card. But he didn't get the other land. And he still has to keep stuff back. And I, I think we just keep going for him here. Uh, another, another thing we can't really attack into. Yeah, I don't care about Ashiok. I think we can let, let him live and just keep trying to do damage to him. Three cards still left in hand. He, he was able to dig for cards he wanted. And again, I believe I just attack in. To. I think this forced him. If I go Ash, I get forced him to actually block. The Brimaz. That way I can get him with the Sky, Sky Guards. And then we can keep two two cats open now because he puts out a favorite hoplite does that really matter we just attack all at him and we actually need to launch the fleet i actually need to hit a land and again we'll go at him And now he's deciding exactly how he wants to do this. It's, it's, it's still four damage going to him. He's down to a seven. And again, I, I can't afford to put anything out. I need to keep up this with Johnny's presence for the indestructibility. Oh, Ashak, I guarantee, is going to put out a fabled hoplite. He needs to at this point. Yep. Four cards still in hand. I'm up to six cards in my hand, which, again, it's, it's all about those land draws. I, didn't I keep a four-land hand? Wow, empty Joe. Which is fine. I mean, eventually I'll draw into those lands. But he's exiled two, three, four, five, six in the, in the graveyard. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Ah, that's okay. So just another prognosis Phoenix. I was worried about a Yep, 
Yeah, ouch, ouch. But now I don't have to worry about any hostilities. I think we're fine. I kind of want a feat of resistance in a turn, but it's a card that I, I might need later on. And I, yeah, I need to launch the fleets really, really bad. There's another planes. Now I can actually start progressing my board a little bit. And I can actually put out the Fable Hero if I dare. So, again, I can make my Skyguard Pro Blue. And he can't block it, and that'll be three. And then he has to block this, but he blocks one of these. Four, five, and then a Johnny's present, six, seven. I really could go for it here. So I think I am going to go for it. So it's going to be Feet of Resistance. Going pro blue. I'm gonna attack him with everything. He does have one card in hand, which if it's a bile blight, no, he can't bile blight. So I think I'm okay. He's gonna put another token. He's gotta block the Brumaz with something. And I believe this is gonna be game. Hopefully he's going to be game. Yeah, blocks, double blocks the Brimaz, blocks a 1-5, takes 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, that's fine. I just lose one guy. Um, do I go for it? What can he do for one mana? What is in last breath? So here's the moment of truce. I just lose a cat token. I give him another turn, though. I believe we do a Johnny's Presence on the Skyguard. And just hope it's enough. And it is. So we make the right move. Again, he could have had some of their launch. The fleets was coming next turn, though. This is a matchup I'm very, very familiar with, and it seems to do very good against him, his deck. I don't need any sort of race, ordeal of heal, Dawnbreaker charity, or Brimaz is very good. So the only, only card that I like to bring in is a Brimaz. The problem is I don't like these Lagona Band Trailblazers. They're just too too much to put. They, they do survive a lot of stuff, but they're, they're, it's just too much... Uh, stuff to pump into it and i'm thinking that even like a hushwing griff might just be better or even like an ordeal here though puts counters but i don't care about life i just wish there was something better don burger chair cures are too slow so i think huskwing griff is just just better than he could be running banishing lights though so races could come in devouring lights are absolutely not coming in i mean well the Varian Lights actually work versus... No, 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 no. Prognostic Sphinx just, just, what, discard a card? To give it Hexproof? Alright, this is embarrassing that I have to look up what Prognostic Sphinx does exactly. I think I'd know this card by now. Let's see. Sphinx. So it's discard a card, gain text proof. Okay, so yeah, that's that's gonna be devouring lights are gonna be bad for that. So again, somewhere celestial flare would be amazing. Um, let's go back to the game, and I'm thinking thinking this is fine. Just the hush wings for the Lagonas, even though they don't do much at all. There is Seeker Seeker launch, Johnny's Presence. This, this is an amazing hand. Very good hand. Again, these Radiant Fountains. I'm so iffy about them. Hey, he's already down to 19. That's always nice. Not quite like Shocks, but see if he thought sees here. So he's already down to a 
and this, you know, this is a very easy or a very, very resilient hand to a thought seize because he, he has to take like a seeker here. He might just take to launch the fleet. But it's costing him, him life. And in, in this, this type of matchup, life is definitely a resource that he doesn't want to be using futilely. So it's a Johnny's presence. Oh, yeah, that's the way that I protect the guys. So with no protection, I can just throw these guys out as quick as possible. So there's the planes. We'll pass the turn. And this turn, Radiant Fountain. Seeker. Pretty sure this guy's going to auto die. Or if he Ashiok's here. Oh, he's using Divination. So we're in great shape. Unfortunately, though, I have to do this to try to draw a card. Need to hit a land, and that's not what I wanted. Because I missed the land drop on two draws. Actually, uh, that would have been three, four draws I missed the land drop. Or missed the ability to hit a land here. So now he can definitely kill the Seeker. Yep, it's a hero's downfall. But... We should be okay. <sighs> Hate to do this. We'll put another one out. And he's got to have an answer for it. I hope he just prognostic Sphinxes here. He's going to be drowned in sorrow. Yeah, that's really good that I didn't have another land. Again, unlucky. If we would hit that land drop, this game's over. And now we hit it. And now I have to wait for another one for the Fabled Hero. Otherwise, <sighs> yeah, this is just... I could risk it and just run out the Fabled Hero. But I don't think I do. So we will draw land here, right? Yes, we draw. And not only that, it's a plane. So perfect, perfect card to draw. Unless he's got to dissolve. He does not. I bet he ends a turn. Tries to kill it here. Oh, wow. Come on, no end of turn. So here's downfall, which is gonna God's willing, which is gonna help me scry. And we want that on top, absolutely. But I mean, he can just draw into another hero's downfall here and kill it, or a bile blight. Can't be a drown in sorrow though. But they just use an obscene amount of removal, murderous cut. Oh, it looks like a prognostic sphinx. Maybe an end hostility. Nope, dig through time. Looks like a dig. No, okay, so murder's cut. Yep. And now we're just going to get probably drawn out because they don't have a lot of creatures. And then he's got dig through time. See, again, it's just get rid of this graveyard so they, can, they can't do this nonsense. Prognostic sphinx comes out. Maybe I should have waited for another land and then we could have double protect it. Um, I need to hit a, la a creature here really bad. Again, launch the fleets aren't that great either. Maybe Lagona is just better than some launch the fleets. And double prognostic sphinx. This can be a very bad issue for me to deal with. Again, all we need to do is draw into... He gets to set up everything though. That's what makes these cards so good. And top, bottom, bottom. So he found what he needs, which is going to be like... Any sort of counter spell or removal. Three cards in hand. We need to draw a creature here. We do not draw a creature here. So, you know what? I'm going to Defiant Strike with him to try to draw a card. See if he gives it Hexproof. He does. Yeah, that's, that's actually smart. Because he knows I need to hit a land. We get a Thoughts he's out of his hand. Which, you know, that was fine. But he's going to be able to attack him with both of them now. And set up everything he needs. And it's probably going to be game here. This is, again, you can't, you can't stumble against this deck. But this whole scenario would have been changed if, if the land drop would have been on time. He would have been having to try to waste cards. And these, these things would have been so bad versus a fabled hero. Especially with uh, Feet of Resistance, Feet of Resistance, God's Willing. But with the amount of cards he has in his hand, I guarantee now he's got the counterspell. So even if I do put out this favorite hoplite, it's just going to get counterspelled down. No, it hits. That's pretty powerful, actually. I can double protect it.
He is risking a lot here by attacking in. I, I don't know he, if he understands how explosive this deck can be. He's at 14. I think he's just thinking that he can out aggro me here. Which he might with 14 cards. And I'm on a two, two turn clock after this. Here's a Hushwing Griff. That'll be nice. We're going to launch this guy. He's going to negate it, but it still gets targeted. So I still get a counter on him. So we'll launch again. Which he's going to dissolve it. Which allows him to scribe. He likes, of course, you know it's on top, so. And I'm not sure what we actually do here. We tag him for three for sure. Puts him down to an 11. And we still have a, a feat to protect him. Which well, shouldn't be a Sorin. A Sorin. That's going to give him lifelink and plus one plus one, right? Yep, that's probably going to put me out of range. So you're going to gain eight, go back up to 19. Be able to scry two. Put me down to a three. And I think I have to go for this to try to get this guy as big as possible. That's actually a good draw. Because it puts me up to five, which means I can block with the, the Hushwing Griff. Block and give it indestructible. Can't get it big enough. We can kill Soren here. I don't know if this is going to do anything, but we're definitely going to try. So Soren dies. And we'll leave up the Hushwing Griff. Which he does have the counter spell for. Okay, so that's that's fine. We'll go on to the last game, and then this I think it will bring in the Lagonas over the Hushwing Griffs, and this it'll be a little bit quicker. But uh, two can just come in. Can we want to launch the fleets? We have now we have twenty cre uh, nineteen creatures again. Yeah, that seems good. We'll submit this. So again, we just need to get the jump on him. A, a, a turn one favorite hoplite is amazing. Poor Celestial Flare. That is the definitely the card. That would make this deck just so solid. Yes, we like to play first. Uh, okay, this is a keepable hand, but it's pretty weak. As far as we have a one and a two and a three drop. But we have the most powerful one drop. So I need something to protect our guys against Bio Blight. I need to draw on a Johnny's Presence. See if he's got another uh, Thought Seize. I card. It's just a, a very annoying card. I don't need anything here, though. He's got to... Ah, oh, Despise is actually better than Thought Seize. He gets the Fabled Hero. He's going to take the Fabled Hero. You've got to take the Fabled Hero. Yep. And now my hand is very weak. We've got a Sky Guard. I'm not going to show him that, though.
You know what? Skygar is actually more powerful than a Seeker. He knows I have a Seeker in the hand, though. I think I'm just going to be too slow in this game, especially with gaining life. He's got a thought he's here. It really wrecks my hand for any sort of launch. Yep. He can take the Seeker. And now I have two dead lands in my hand. He's got five cards still. Feeder Resistance will be nice. But I think I'm a little bit slow against this deck. I'd love to draw into like a Johnny's Presence. Temple, that doesn't actually allow him to, to drown in sorrow. So I can keep one of my guy alive if he tries to Bile Blight. Radiant Fountain's a terrible draw. Down to a 13. And he's going to drown in sorrow. Which I can protect one of them. I think I'll protect the favored hoplite. Because flying doesn't matter in this. So I guess Seeker would have been a little bit better. Because we could have protected both of them. So... Yeah, Pro Black's fine. Doesn't do anything. Kills the Sky Guard. But I have a permanent 3-4 now. And now I, I really need to draw into another card. That can pump up my Hoplite. But I'm down to one card. Any subsequent land drop is terrible. There's the... The fa Fabled Hero is pretty sweet, actually. But I'd rather have some way to protect the, the Hoplite. I have to play it. If he has a Murder's Cut and, like, Heroes Downfall, I'm done. But it's a prognostic sphinx. That's weak if I draw into something here. Oh, that is not good. Oh, that is just bad. So I attack him with just the fa favorite hoplite. We needed to hit something there. I can't believe he risked that. Yeah, he's got to though, right? If that would have been in Johnny's presence. Ay, ay, ay. Well... That's the risk of running a deck like this. That it does need to have like a good balance of spells. And with this, this hand where we got lands and creatures no, and only one spells, it's not nearly as powerful. Again, I'm just... If he has any sort of dig through time... He's letting me get out of this, though. Draw out of this. So he's debating whether to use it right now. Yep, that's good enough. And we just get a Radiant Fountain anyway. Womp womp. So, seven lands. Ashiok. Now Ashiok's going to find anything but lands. He finds a Seeker. Oh, land, land. I'll take that. Thanks for getting my land flood away. Skyguard is terrible. He does not dissolve it, smart guy. And unfortunately, he's going to put out a, Se a Seeker's actually incredibly powerful for his strategy. I can't believe he did that. I really can't believe that that's the route he went. He got, I got another, a Plains. He's got another Seeker, though. And Soren, I bet he negative twos puts a black flyer out. No. Yeah, okay. So it gives him lifelink until the next. Ay, ay, ay. The lands, the lands. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, we have way too many lands. All right, that's going to do it. I don't think we can come back from this. As what does that do? Gets an emblem, and being each player, that player sacks a creature. Yeah, that can't happen. I, why is he still exiling? He gets more planes, but he gets... Yeah, he gets he has more creatures and more planes, which is exactly what I don't care about. And let's see what he does here with three cards left in his hand. He has a dissolve in his hand, guaranteed. Still does not... Go in for the kill. Well, that's a nice card. I think we play it.
And these get bigger, but I don't think they do anything. I hope he dissolves it. I'm not attacking in. Bio Blight. Yeah, I'm conceding. There's no way I can come back from this. So, way too many lands. I think that the, the, this was definitely a game of hiccups of, of drawing into too many lands and not getting that third land drop on time in the second game. This is a very easy matchup. I have a very high win record versus black-blue control. And I, don't th I think that actually splashing white hurts him, doesn't help him. And he had a nice little um, a planeswalker, a planeswalker, a creature, a spell, a spell, a spell, a spell, a despise, thossies. Like, look at all these one of each stuff. Where, whereas, you know, on our side we had uh, creature, 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 land, 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 and one spell. So that, you need a, you need a nice little balance like he had. And, and it's pretty much in our favor. So these presences definitely needed to come a little bit quicker. Um... Uh, or Defiant Strikes or anything just to get these 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 guys bigger. So anyway, this is Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. We'll play one more. Thanks for watching. <laughs>